Vision 1. 10.13 p.m. in my apartment in Astoria. Red couch, you slept here. Dial 732-349-0894. In my current life, the number no longer works since your death on July 26, 2012. Tonight, I imagine a different outcome when I type in the digits. Hello, you answer the phone, that familiar friendly voice. It is glorious. Mom, you're there. Listen, there is so much I need to say. I am sharing your words, our story on stage. My goal is to self-publish your collection of essays and poetry, maybe even our emails. Jen, this is how it's supposed to be, my baby doll. I am delighted poetry is in your life, you respond. It, I believe it brings us emotions and permits us to have those emotions. Without poetry, there is not music. You wrote about losing your vision in your early 20s. Something happened on my way through life. Somewhere between Hol Holy Angels Academy College and Colorado, my good friend was lost. Sometime between young adulthood, apartments for one, and middle age, I grieved. Somehow, when I thought nothing could happen to me, a miracle believer, I lost my good friend. Vision two, put away the blood glucose machine, the testing strips, lancelets, the needles, goodbye. You worship the ocean, mom. We sit side by side on the park bench, lava lap beach at the Jersey shore, munching boardwalk fries without worry over type one blood sugar highs and lows. Mom, it's hard to do this without you physically here. I say this as I squeeze your soft hands, noticing the familiar stack of bangle bracelets displayed on each wrist. You're like a gypsy, Mom. Bright beads and sterling silver. We climb to the top of the sugary gypsum dunes at White Sands in New Mexico. We sip lattes and read Joan Didion essays. I pull out my notebook. Mom, I have our poems here about how we survived divorce. You as the wife and me as the daughter what he left behind. I wrote, he left behind more than the customized sign that read Harmony Bar out in the den, a pantry full of red enchilada sauce, the amethyst ring my mom bought him for his birthday on February 5th. He left behind a life, a wife and a daughter. He left behind a past blended with lies he'd rather forget. Maybe that's why we got stuck hauling out the garbage. Finale, mom, you said, this is the last time I shall ever write about him. Every good memory has been photographed, shredded, pasted, and piled in the cardboard shoebox in the closet. Once, a psychologist told me to open the box at a specific time, spread the contents on the quilt, and think. You need to set aside an hour for rememberings like this. Cry, rant, scream, tear, and then return the box to its closet corner. I do, not to do, I do not want to do that anymore. I want him gone forever. He deserves nothing from me ever again. My mom is still with me on stage, in the chair beside me, and on the page. I see her and I hear her. My mom is not holding my elbow when she walks with me to the Bowery Poetry Club on Sunday. Yes, Jen, it's okay that I'm not physically here. I am with you whenever you need me, she says. I can still experience these activities with you. Be brave, be bold in your own, own work, chickadee. On this Monday, decide the world is an excellent spot to be in, alive and celebrating. Put aside the past for today and just take it out when it feels right. Celebrating sound, if I can find it in one minute. In the silent sun of a Friday afternoon in Albuquerque, a doctor's paper shoe boots shuffled into my room. By Patricia Harmon, by the way. He placed my fingers around the tiniest creature. Noisy in this quiet was Jennifer Dawn. In the miniature baby box surrounded by monster machines, she moved like a 60s rock and roll dancer. Miniature mittens halted her hands from removing tubes. She longed to make her extraordinary noise in the world. Desperately, I needed to hear her and hold her. I was a blind mother with overwhelming fears, dramatic possibilities, miscarriage, stillbirth, death, or disappointments. Miracles happened, the music played on. By Tuesdays, tubes and restrictions were removed. The noisy infant was in my arms, screeching her song. Home, the alarm clock rang throughout long nights. 
She slept through feedings, whippering, sucking, breathing. Sounds sang out in the silence of spring's desert dawns. I crawled on the carpet, alert for minor movements. She traveled by Fanny, falling asleep in the corners. In her bucket on the kitchen table, her mouth and mush bananas inevitably met. Yum, yum, she mumbled spiritedly, spitting a mouthful back at me. Mama, mama, she screamed excitedly, running down the sidewalk outside my classroom. Her song sounds were songs on sultry September afternoons. She grabbed my long cane, imitating mama. When ocean waves knocked her down, I heard her comically rise, spitting and sputtering. When she jumped from the fishing boat at Elephant Butte, I followed. She read to me from the beginning, books for music. Today we read in pubs in New York City. She reads her poetry and mine, we read together. Words have sounds which move me. On that one April 1st, the first song, the first sound was a song impacting forever. She still sings to me. Thank oh. you.